There's been certain things we've watched that they're not, they enrich the movies that came before it or the sequel, right? Like they, yeah. they, they improve upon it. Like it's not that they are a necessity to understand what's happening, but they like, you watch it and you're like, oh, that makes the previous one so much better or yes yes or like we've we've watched like we've watched the lore grow like the yes. first movie is it, the first movie and this movie are like in different universes like first movie mm -hmm. you're in normal world back to the movie dads podcast we're your hosts. I'm Howie. I'm Kyle. And that is Kyle. Kyle, we are back for episode number 48 of the Movie Dads podcast. Big premiere movie of the week, 2024 American science fiction dystopian action adventure film. Got that Fuck straight it. off the website. That's a mouthful. <laughs> Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. She said epically badass. So how it should be save that save that for the review time but uh <laughs> you are not wrong mm -hmm. um but yeah so episode 48 cool closing down on number 50 that'll be pretty exciting so i think 50 is gonna end up being furiosa which phew, blow it up let's do it yeah that's i'm i'm seeing some good things yeah, we're gonna talk about that here in a minute but if you're watching us on youtube please click the like and subscribe Tell us what you like. Tell us what you don't like. Leave a comment. Click the bell so you get uh, notifications when new episodes come out, which is at 9 a.m. on Wednesday, Central Standard Time. If you're not watching us on YouTube, you can find us on many podcast networks, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and iHeartRadio, among many others. You can also find some of our short clips and videos on social media, at Movie Dads Pod, on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. But we're Movie Dads. We've got Movie Kids. We don't have a ton to talk about. Obviously, happy Mother's Day to any of the moms out there that listen to mm -hmm. the show. Both of you. All all <laughs> yeah, all of actually probably one. Mine Pro mine doesn't listen. Mine so. doesn't either. That mine doesn't either. <laughs> yeah. so, all, well, whoever whoever you are out there, happy Mother's Day. But uh yeah, so uh yeah, you know, my wife kept it kind of low key this weekend. Um I mean Reagan had softball practice. We went out to dinner last night. Um but today was just kind of like doing stuff around the house, right? Like, you know, mm -hmm. I was just kind of doing as much as I could, you know, whether it was sheets or wash the dog, blah, blah, blah. But my wife wanted to do after dinner um, Mario Kart tournament for Mother's Ooh. Day. So, I mean, that's, you know, I don't I won't complain about that. So it was us and the kids. Nice. Dez, Dez has, um, I hate to admit it and I'll never say it to him, but he's, I think he's finally passed me. And the old Mario oh, Kart. Oh, Mario Kart. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If He's fucking fine. Grayson were to walk down right now yeah. and say, let's 1v1 on Halo, I would fucking crush him into the ground sure. until he's he'll, he's getting close. But <laughs> I'll I'll keep brushing up on my skills to try to hold on as long as I can. Yeah. But love that. Whoa, yeah. Mario Kart tourney. Mm -hmm. Did you guys do the like the where you set up the track with the actual carts? Or we did do you that do, like, the game? sometimes. That's only two player though. Um, yeah. So we, since it was all four of us were playing, we just did the old uh, Mario Kart Eight Deluxe on the Switch. But That's yeah, Re fun. Reagan can That's beat fun. me from time to time. Like it's you know usually I'm the old you know nobody can touch me. She's, a, she's a girl, so yeah, like she catches me every once in a while. She's not bad. Like you. She's not bad. But Dez, he's getting good. Like it's, and we play on 200, you know, we don't play on 50, 100, or even 100. We play on 200. I mean, we play for you keeps. play hard. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's, we, yeah, play, yeah. we play fast. I love that. Love that. We did get the, uh, we got the like actual cart track thing that you can set up for Christmas. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we got, yeah, fun. we got two of those too. I wonder if you can yeah. do all of them. That'd be kind of, get all of them going. No, we really mm. should though. Like a super be kind of fun. race. We could yeah. probably do it down here in the, in the bat cave there's a lot of open space enough let's fucking yeah. talk about that let's do that um yeah, yeah for me same like mother's day I, like we're in the thick of dance season and steph teaches dance like every other night 
like six to five to six days a week for like six months. So mm-hmm. we are right at the cusp of getting to recital, which is the big giant day where they do a thousand dances and then she's done. And when she is done, then like I'm not solo with the boys so I can do like yard work and keep the house up and like mm-hmm. get her pool and stuff ready. So, um, but she had an extra day this weekend. So I finally got caught up on some yard work. Mm-hmm. That was great. Um, got, we went to see this movie, obviously. Mm-hmm. And originally I had talked about maybe bringing Grayson because I don't, I didn't tell him about these movies. He just randomly like stumbled upon one on Disney Plus when they added all of them. And he watched the James Franco one and then like went on a binge and watched through all of them on his own. Maybe or maybe not good parenting choice, but whatever. They're um, not bad. They're not bad. Yeah. Like he's seen worse. Like he's seen fucking Kong Skull Island. Okay. Like that's mm. his, that's crazy ape rated R as it gets. Crazier apes. Yes. Good point. Or ape singular. Um, But I had told him that like I would bring, take him to the movie. And then when we got to the day, it was like, oh, I'm just, just going to, it's the adults. Like I'm not going to say anything. And then like my wife was like, what time are you going to see the the Planet of the Apes movie? And he like came sprinting. I could hear him from the distance. What? You're going to that movie without me? And was like, I'm going to the movie. And I said, all right, fine. <laughs> there was a seat right next to him. Like, actually, yeah, I'm glad I brought you. Because like when we were driving, he was like so juiced about it. And I had forgot like how into the Planet of the Apes he was. So it was a later movie, at least for him. So like the movie started at his normal bedtime, roughly. So I was a little nervous. That mm-hmm. He was just going to fall asleep the whole time. Now he was old enough now that I don't have to go with him on his fucking 16 potty breaks. But, um, and the bathroom is right across from the mo- from the theater. That, so it made it a little easier. I, so, I like seeing movies in that theater for that reason, because yes, that bathroom is like five right seconds. across the hall. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but it, he really liked the movie. He thought it was awesome. He's been talking about it ever since. So I was glad we I brought him. So it's like, yeah, having a little movie buddy is just it's fun. And I'm like yeah. just at the at the start of that in this dad life. So of like a movie buddy. So, but yeah, that was us. That was our dad stuff, family nice. kid stuff. Good. Um, but that brings us into because man, last week I thought we had a long, freaking like three weeks here. running. Yeah, but but this one might take the cake. But this is my uh, most excited uh, segment that we do. Our six to midnight. These are the things that get us up in the morning. Um, the things that we're excited about. Nerd news. Movie trailers, casting decisions, random old Star Wars Legends books that we're reading at the time. Whatever nerd thing that we have stumbled upon for that week, this is what we go over. And we have a ton. I think because you've got a lot, I've got a lot. Why don't I do one? You do one. And we'll just jump back and forth. I like it. Before we get started, hold on. Oh, oh, I love that. Can we start here? <laughs> yes. Oh my God. You got, can you even hear me? Can you hear me at all? Very slightly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Had to do it. That's amazing. It. God. I mean, your shirt, your ex gone, give it to you. It gave it to us. It gave it to us. Giggity. Twice. Yeah. My God. It didn't I, even ask for our I number. I even dusted this one. Now I know you, you think I probably just bought this. I haven't dusted this baby off. I pulled out old X Men twenty five, Fatal oh, Attractions. Oh man, that's the issue right there. That's that's amazing that one you own that, and two that happens to line up with your comic book buying spree. I told thousands you. of dollars of comic books you've bought in a month. Whatever, X Men ninety seven. Whoo! It just so good. God, it's so good. And I'm watching episode nine and I'm like, there's no way they're doing fatal attractions. This is no way. And then they split the teams up and Wolverine goes up into space. And I'm like, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. He's going to pull his, he's going to pull it. He's going to pull his freaking skeleton out. He's going to pull the adamantium. He's going to oh. rip it right off his bones. Crazy. 
crazy. This someone, one of our friends, were in a group text who's a nerd like us, but he's not on the pod. He has been a little bit like he's like a week behind us and watching this. So like, yeah, he'll, I think he'll. I had asked him if he'd started watching it, and he goes, "No, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to or not." And I'm like, "Dude, I don't care. It's a cartoon. It's yeah. It'll, it's we'll just so it. funny, and it's the same thing that I do because you watch this a little bit early, so like you can tell when I'm watching because I immediately just randomly text you, "Oh my god, <laughs> yeah." Our our buddy Ross basically did the same thing. Like, "Oh my god, there's yeah. no way." When you were and texting other- me that you were watching it because I I got up early and watched it first thing in the morning. Like that's where I'm at now. Like I. I'm not setting my alarm for 3 a.m. like when it drops, but I'm like, I'm going to get up a little early before work and I'm going to watch this. I'm working from home on those days. Yeah, but when you text me that you were watching it, a part of me, I'd already watched it twice at that point, And I was like, I'm about ready to run over and watch it again. <laughs> Dude, it was, I, I would, had texted this to him because he was just going through it of like, it's crazy to me how like this is such a, it's a, it's a small amount of episodes. We've got eight, right? Is that nine? Or, we not, just watched we, nine. One more. So nine episodes of a show that we haven't seen since '97. So, like, they've got to do a little bit of catching up, mm-hmm. which they really haven't done. They picked up really where they've left off, and they mm-hmm. have fit in these 25, 30 minute episodes. Yeah, they're, they're like between short. 30 and 35. They're a little yeah, bit longer than the old ones, but yeah, they're, they're not, not long. long. No. They have fit like six major X-Men, like major X-Men comic stories, like in this small amount of a show. And what I was texting them, of like, it's so crazy how they've been able to put those big stories in and, actually do them really great and like being faithful to them and people loving it usually like batman versus superman you try to do fucking three stories in one movie and like mm-hmm. everyone gets pissed off because you miss stuff but mm-hmm. anyways i fucking loved it what what are your thoughts on it it's amazing all right so you know if you haven't watched episode nine yet i'm sorry we're talking about it here it's it been out for a week deal with it <laughs> So in like Fatal Attractions, the original storyline, it goes across a couple different comics. It's X-Men, Wolverine comics, Uncanny X-Men, X-Force, Excalibur even is involved and um, basically leads to this moment. Um, But Colossus is the X-Men that like betrays the rest of the team because um, his sister dies. Metal bastard. Yeah, his sister dies and he is now like, you know what? F the humans, like Fuck all, all for the mutants. I'm joining Magneto, which when you're completely made out of metal, probably good to, good to be on his side. But anyway, <laughs> the, the the thing that like they really impressed me about it was like, and, and you you even noticed like in episode five, you were like, F Rogue, screw her. She's, tur- she's like turning coat. And they were setting it up for her mm-hmm. to be the one that betrayed yeah. the team. And, and, and I was like, so when this happened, I was like, oh my God, that this is perfect. Mm-hmm. Like how they've done this and, and, uh, they've, they've done, they've got the bastion storyline with the, with the prime sentinels. They got the Magneto and the fatal attraction storyline coming on now, which is if it leads into what I think it's going to lead into, holy shit, season two is going to be nuts. Mm. Um, and with what happens with Wolverine after he gets his adamantium ripped out, that's nuts too. So they've just, it's, it's perfect. This show is amazing. It's like, I just, I can't wait for Wednesday, the finale. And then I'm going to be so sad that I have to wait for it to come back again. I want more of this. Like we've talked about, it makes X-Men relevant again, in my Mm. opinion, makes a lot of the characters from it relevant again. Wolverine's always been cool, but now yeah. like everyone's back on the Cyclops game. Gambit's fucking dope. Like Magneto is a badass. We got good and guy bad. Magneto and bad guy, which is like perfect. But it's not even uh, like it's not even like bad guy Magneto. It's like they just proved Magneto right. Yeah, you know, yes. and that's, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what they. He's done. just doing what he thinks it needs to happen for. Like yeah, his kind. He's, so uh, you know, there's in in his dialogue. We've talked about that before, but holy shit! Like, you know, you you asked. He, what does he say to Xavier? He's like, "You've asked me to walk your path. Are you ready to walk mine?" Because yeah, like I walked your path and it failed. 
and look at all Bro. the mutants that died in Genosha and like whew. this show has dropped some fucking banger Magneto spit and fire Wolverine ha- I texted you this like yeah. Wolverine has two lines in this show that were just like so profound and hard hitting one mm-hmm. of them was like it was after Gambit had died we were we he died at the end of an episode we're starting a new episode where it's his funeral everyone's grieving and like people are trying to understand why rogue's not there not crying or like which why she's acting different than everyone else and mm-hmm. wolverine just says like silently he says grief's a grief's a lonely war it was like oh it's so bad because i felt that in my soul mm-hmm. um and then he had another one in this one as he fucking stabs magneto and i know this is probably in the comic but he he fucking stabs him and and what's he what does he say like the brave ones always die first been yeah, he's a, like, been in a lot, in a lot, lot of wars. wars. But brave ones always die first. Like that brave was brave ones fucking... always die first. Boom. Uh, that and, made that moment seem so. Good. I swear that came like from a Magneto quote. Mm. I think that even actually, more cool. Yeah, that's why they I think wouldn't he have was, put that in. Yep. Freaking great! I can't wait for the new episode. I really, 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 really hope that this is what pushes them to green light a Spider-Man continuation. I did see there was a, like, cause people have been pushing for the, like the team that did this show, the world wants them to do the like live action X-Men movies. And basically that was like confirmed that that team is not going to have anything to do with it. So like, it's kind of a bummer. Everyone's kind was kind of hoping like, Oh my God, we we're going to get like some fucking awesome live action X-Men yeah. with this team. And, we're not so it was actually a quote from the original animated series that magneto said to the x-men the brave ones are always the first to die god so this guy knows his knows uh, his content so he was bringing it back yes full circle thrown oh my god it makes it better six to midnight yeah talk about storytelling um Um, and 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 he and he died they fired him yeah well and, i think there was some controversy there so which yeah is but why they've we never really talked I, about it right 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 and they've never come really come right out and said it but there have been rumors but which yeah. is a bummer because my god he is <laughs> if ever there was a person to give the that let him cook yeah you there's know, some, uh, certain things you can't do though so. yeah that's true uh anyways so uh, let's jump to something else since we've got a ton to talk about yep. Um, well, we can stay on the animated, uh, series world because sure. we just got a new, uh, variety had like an exclusive story interview with the team of Batman, the caped crusader. Now, if you remember, this is the like cartoon Batman show that is basically building off of Batman, the animated series. It's a lot of the same people that did that that are not necessarily X-Men 97 where they're picking up and doing the same show. It's right. like building off of that time frame, that type of feel, those episodes, the same writers and creators are on it. Mm-hmm. Um was originally for HBO Max. Got scrapped. No idea why. Amazon picked it up. They picked it up for two seasons. Mm-hmm. Anyways, Variety got the story. We got pictures of a lot of the characters. So we got to see what the animation looks like. Yep. We get we get to see Batman in like his original first appearance. Purple gloves, fucking sideways, kind of yep. Wolverine-esque pointy ears. I think the animation looks great. It does. I I love the 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 freaking noir like 1930s feel of batman the animated series is very much in here um bruce wayne you see him he's in like a three-piece suit like just looking all suave and debonair looks great things to be excited about for this guys if you're a batman fan or a batman the animated series fan or the batman with robert pattinson if you liked any of that content this is like a super it's like the Avengers are making of Batman are making this show. Like it's getting, it's produced by JJ Abrams, Matt Reeves, Matt Reeves, the Batman mm-hmm. wrote and directed the Batman. Um, Bruce Tim, who is the original 
creator, producer, director, writer for Batman animated series. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Ed Brubaker, who's a big comic book. He's been involved with a ton of Batman stuff and a lot of other um, comic book stuff, but they are producing the writing. Um, it comes out on August 1st. There's 10 episodes. It's going to drop all 10 on that day. Um, and we, like I said, we're getting season two, Amazon prime. Uh, we'll get two seasons. I mean, and just like X-Men. It, it just looks so good. It and I cannot wait for people who like make really good Batman, like my favorite Batman stuff, which we've talked about a million times. Mm-hmm. We're getting that show. And the, I will say like, you can see the, the, uh, like the Matt Reeves, like Jim Gordon looks exactly like Jim Gordon from the movie, the Batman, mm-hmm. if you haven't seen that, um, which is, was a newer take on the character, which right. I like. Yep. Um, Harley Quinn looks different. They're going with this yeah. like Japanese kind of, she looks like a, a geisha. Jack in the box. yeah, like a Jack in the box geisha, yeah. like just. What, I, it's very different than the traditional Harley mm-hmm. Quinn, but I think that will, I think I'm excited for that. Just, I trust these guys like wholeheartedly with this. Um, the other thing I thought was cool that Clayface is one of the villains that they showed mm-hmm. and he doesn't look like a big giant freaking mud blob in bet. Like he does in most stuff. He looks like he did in the original um, appearances of him where he was more like a phantom of the opera type character. Like he, he, they, and they said in the article as well, he'll be more of like, like traditional old school movie monsters is like what he'll be morphing into, which like, I think is so cool. So Absolutely. anyways, I'm excited for that. We just got news on that. So we got a release date. What a time to be alive. The two, uh, or in my opinion, the two greatest animated series from the 1990s, my childhood, your young, young childhood. Like Fuck. both got sequel series this year and they, one is absolute fire and the other one looks like it's going to be absolute fire. Like yes. S- Spider-Man's got to be coming, right? We like, need it. it has a trifecta. Has to be. <laughs> the, the what a time to be alive. Gauntlet. <laughs> the, the Thanos gauntlet will be complete if we get Spider-Man. Um, um, cool. That's what, cr- do, that's- what, what do you got? Well, okay, so a little bit of Marvel movie news. So everybody knows that the Fantastic Four movie slated to come out in summer of 2025, right? And so mm-hmm. we got our we got our full cast list of the Fantastic Four back in February, and then we got the cast for Silver Surfer, right? With Julia Garner. Julia Garner is going to be Silver Surfer, and then we got news this week that John Malkovich is going to be in Fantastic Four in an undisclosed role. You and I will talk more about that in a second. And then the big one was, to me anyway, was Ralph Innocent is going to voice Galactus. Ralph Innocent, um, he's kind of a character actor. He's got this like gravelly, deep, terrifying voice. If you've seen, he's the dad in the Vitch with Anya oh, Taylor Joy. So scary, <laughs> so fucking moody in that movie. Right. He's um God, I'm trying to think what else. He's the voice of the Green Knight. If you saw the Green Knight, mm-hmm. um, which was which was crazy. And uh he he does you he it's just you'll know his voice when you hear it. He's perfect for Galactus. Um yeah. It's, he it's sa- amazing. He sounds like he like freaking gargles glass like daily. Like his yeah. voice was just so deep, rough, it, and yeah. And it's what Galactus needs to be. I'm I'm pretty yeah, like, like booming, just yes, like epically booming, deep. Right, because they had talked about they they Javier they like you know rumors where Javier Bardem was mm-hmm. circling for Galactus, and I'm like ah okay. I mean I could see it, I guess. And then when the, Ralph Innocent was like, yeah, that's the one. That's the voice. I could like picture him like a deep booming f- voice in deep space, like yeah. <laughs> just like this galactic monstrosity. I'm right. excited for it. I think that's a great hire. So, so Malkovich is in an undisclosed role, right? And then I text you that, and you, in your first response was maybe he's Doom. And oh yeah, yeah and yeah, I yeah. I had said to you, I said like I just I don't see it. If if Marvel's gonna put Doom on film, Doom is. Doom's not like he's not Claw, right? He's not he's not Killmonger, right? Like you can't get away with putting Doctor Doom in one movie; it's impossible. Mm. 
Mm-hmm, he's mm-hmm. too big of a bad, right? Like he's got to span multiple movies. And Malkovich is like m- mid seventies. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't see him playing Doctor Doom for ten years. I just, you know, I like the rumors that Killian Murphy's playing Doctor Doom. I like that. I, one. I like it a lot. I love Killian Murphy, and yes. I think he's great. I think the the, and I don't necessarily think that John Malkovich is like. Oh, that like he is Dr. Doom, but more of like, I don't look at Dr. Doom as like this, like physic, even though he is a big dude, like as a physically imposing villain who fights, Mm -hmm. like I look at him as like this super smart, brilliant, kind of like Magneto and that he's just like this, Mm -hmm. he, he, he's almost like a super villain politician. Like he's got his own fucking country. Or kingdom or however the hell he fucking refers to it i don't know i think i think just think of john malkovich could be like this imposing i, I, will, I will say this like when i think of dr doom like it's got to be like darth vader right like he's yeah i agree if you don't need to see his face he wears it's he's he's encased in metal i mean and they should leave it that way too right like because that's the way he is in the comics Please. don't Fucking don't please don't Halo. Boba Fett. Don't, yeah, don't Boba, Boba Fett him. <laughs> um, but I mean, like, and you think about, and James Earl Jones is, you know, in his nineties now. But Malkovich, I guess, if you're if you're hiring him to be Doom, and we're not going to see his face, maybe. His, I, his I, he's. Pro- I I think this the as now that we're talking about it out loud, I was just texting you about it. Like, oh, Malkovich, he's definitely Doom. Like, he's going to be Doom. But he he's too weaselly, you know. He's I don't want to say like John Mug, which is a weasel, but he's got more of like a he's a he's a fast talker type of person, and I feel like Doom is like a very calculated villain that needs like a deep voice too. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Anyways, I who knows? He could just be a random, regular, not important character. You're right. He could be. He could just be like. Some guy that yeah, works like scientist with, guy. That's a, it'll be some comic character relief. that has yeah. something to do with the Fantastic Four, but is not super important. Maybe, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, all right. Uh, but I like that. I love that Galactus casting. That's great. Mm-hmm. Um, news dropped like today, or at least I didn't see it until today, of a new Grendel movie that's mm-hmm. coming out. Um, it, it Grendel is the monster in the most famous poem short Mm -hmm. story beowulf um and it's going to be a jim henson creature shop movie right let's go i we've talked about jim henson movies a million times at least the creature shop stuff Mm -hmm. like everything they do is in fucking credible right um Get this. So the movie is called Grendel. It's from Grendel's point of view for the for like the story of Beowulf. Uh-huh. Jeff Bridges, the dude abides. Freaking Mister Tron himself is going to be Grendel, right? And then Beowulf is freaking Dave Batista. Let's go. Not to mention Brian Cranston is in it as King Hrothgar, right? Um. Brian Cranston, Jeff Bridges, Dave Batista, Beowulf, Jim Henson, Ninja Turtle, fucking creature movie. So you assume, take my money. See, yeah, exact, exactly, right. So you assume, and obviously, I read Beowulf. I think most people have. Um, they had to in school if they didn't do it yeah, on their own, right? <laughs> Legally, required. you had to read this story. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. It's like everybody like read The Hobbit and everybody read Beowulf. Um, listen, I. Batista, I would assume, is going to be live action, right? As Beowulf, I would assume. Um, I would say Grendel's probably going to be a creature that Jeff fucking Bridges is going to voice, right? Better be, be a badass fucking creature. It will, you know, it will be. It'll be cool. It'll be way better than that that CGI dog. I was movie. just about to ask what your thoughts were of that Beowulf mocap movie. Um, the casting it, was so bad. I thought and wanted that. That was one of those movies that I wanted to be so good. Yeah. And it just wasn't. But right. I per- tricked myself into thinking that it was better than it actually was. It was horrible. So, yeah. 
It was <laughs> horrible. Fucking... But yeah, I'm excited. I mean, like, uh, yeah, Jim Henson's Creature Shop, Brian Henson's producing. Let's go. A hundred percent. Fucking. It's going to be great. I'm down so... for it. Angelina Ho- Jolie hopefully doesn't show up as Grindel's mom. Oh, my God. I was actually <laughs> just thinking like, oh, yeah, fucking Angelina Jolie was in that movie. Yeah. God damn it. And then, uh, okay, well, next thing, were you good with Beowulf? Were you done with? Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. So then the last thing I wanted to talk about today was there was news this week that Peter Jackson's coming back to New Line oh. to produce at least two new Lord of the Rings live action movies. So that news broke and you saw that. And then the news broke later on the same day that the first one is going to be titled titled The Hunt for Gollum and will be directed by Gollum himself, Andy Serkis. Let's go. Let's go. Give me more. I fucking want this movie so bad. Let's go. Lord of the Rings returns. The return of the king, Peter Jackson himself. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm glad he's producing. I'm glad Andy Serkis is directing. I think that'll be um, a good thing, especially with the the motion capture work. I'm sure that'll be involved. I yeah. wonder if he'll play Gollum again while he's directing. I would assume so. I don't know if that. There's news no came out yet way or not. that they would. There's no way that they would bring Gollum back, have a movie about Gollum from mm-hmm. this series, have Gollum himself direct it, and not be in it as Gollum. Right. Like, that's crazy. But it makes you wonder, like, I wonder what time frame it takes place. Is this going to be about, like... When the... they find him when he has the ring? Right. Right. Is this, like, after he comes out of the cave, he doesn't have the ring anymore because Bilbo took it, and they... Mordor's looking for him because they know he was the last one that had it. You know, it, it, it makes me wonder. It's, I would assume that's what it's about. I thought there was... Now, I'm going to get fucking barbecued from Bojanski <laughs> and Bradley because they're, they're lore snobs. But I thought when he originally got the ring, like took it off out of the fucking pond or creek or whatever. Yeah. That like... The the forces of Sauron like can feel kind of like a magnet, like they feel where the ring is, so they're constantly going and and they almost essentially were like trying to hunt down the ring and hunt him down, and that's how he ended up in that cave for like hundreds of years. He was there a while. Barbecue me, guys. That's probably wrong, but I'm I almost feel like maybe the when I think of the hunt for Gollum, I think of that time frame of like hunting him down to try to take the ring before he goes into the cave. Gotcha. Maybe or maybe not or the after after Bilbo gets the ring and they're hunting him down because they knew yeah. he was the last one that had it. So either way, screams like Baggins. That's right. Yep. Okay. Yeah, Bingo. Yeah. Love that. All right. Anyway, all right. Fucking great. Love that. Uh, one last thing. We've got Furiosa coming up on an episode fifty. And holy balls. There are some freaking great reviews right now. Yep. Which like has put my mind at not 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 put my mind at these but i'm excited because i love this franchise i was a little bummed that we're not getting fucking mr tom hardy himself back but i'm hearing that this movie's fucking mm-hmm. awesome super random like famous person that came out and said good things was hideo kojima which is like no yeah. if you've played metal gear, metal gear he's like yeah. the director of metal gear yeah. series he's like a he's like Christopher Nolan of video games. Like he's one of the best like video game director writers of all time. He came out and said that this movie is like a masterpiece. So yeah, like, I had seen like a, a something by Edgar Wright too. Edgar Wright's the director that did like Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz. And then he did like Baby oh, Driver. Yeah, yep, yep. Anyway, he wrote that he had dinner with George Miller, like right, like George Miller had come to see last night in Soho, which was a movie that came out a few years ago that Edgar Wright had done. And George Miller had said, what would you think about Anya Taylor-Joy playing like a young Furiosa? And Edgar Wright's like, call her tomorrow, 100% do it. So Edgar oh, Wright nice. kind of told the story about how he like roundabout was like, yes, call her, hire her. And then, but he saw it too. And he was like, it's, he's like, this movie feels huge. Like it mm-hmm. feels like it's on every wall of the theater. You're like lost where you're at. He's like, it's yeah epic on a scale of epicness that maybe nobody's ever seen and it's like okay let's go i'm excited Dude, maybe this will be the first movie there's a theater in town that does like that fucking three screens i don't oh. know what it's called 
but it's like almost like surround fucking movie theater. Mm. You need to look into maybe doing that. Might be worth it. Um, but yeah, all right. That was the longest fucking six midnight of all time. It was but... a pretty long one. They've all been pretty long lately, but lots of good stuff coming out. It's nice to be. It's nice to be back in the saddle and there's movie news again after that bullshit yeah, last year. Yeah, fucking sons of bitches and their strikes. You selfish sons of bitches. Thank it's you the for studios. the content. No, it's the studios. Blame yeah, them. Fuck you, you big evil sons of bitches. All right. Well, that takes us into our big premiere movie of the week. The American science fiction dystopian action adventure film. I just wanted to say that one more time. <laughs> Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Just like we do with any other new movie, we'll talk a little bit about our first thoughts on the movie, recommend whether we want, think you should go see it or not, mm -hmm. our recommendation, give a spoiler warning, then we'll dive into the spoilery parts of the movie. Mm -hmm. But uh, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes um, is uh, distributed and produced by 20th Century Studios, which is obviously was used to be Fox, which was purchased by Disney. So this is the first Planet of the Apes movie that Disney's produced. Directed by Wes Ball, written by Josh Friedman. Cast includes Owen Teague as Noah, Freya Allen as May, Kevin Durand as Proximus Caesar, Peter Macon as Raka, Lydia Peckham as Suna, Travis Jeffrey as Anaya, and William H. Macy as Trevathan. Who played uh, Raka again? Uh, Peter Macon. He is mostly a voice actor, so he did a pretty good job as, as he the old orangutan. Stole a goddamn show, this yeah. movie. And there was a lot of people that stole some shows. So we'll talk about that. <laughs> yeah, movie. this movie was um, fucking awesome. Yeah, so Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes had a $160 million budget, which was actually less than the last couple of movies. They were all around $190 million. Hmm. Um, It opened to just under 50, or just at $56 million domestically over its opening weekend, which was be slightly better than projections, which had it in the like 50 to $55 million range. So slightly better. Um, and just a little bit kind of in line with the last few Planet of the Apes movies. So they were all yeah, kind of right in that 50 range too. Um, overall with international totals, it made $129 million worldwide over its opening weekend. It's well on its way to being a hit. So that's positive. It's crazy. Especially after the last few weekends, the box office is still down. I read an article today. 22% under where it was last year. Of course, last year we had Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Um, but it's like they compared it to 2019 pre-pandemic numbers, and it's still down like in the 40s. Like it's almost half of what it is. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Yikes. Streaming obviously well, has, a, has a big piece of that because, I mean, like we talked about Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warf. You can already get that at home. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. it just came out. You know, it's, it's just kind of the world we live in now. People aren't going out as much as they used to to the the theater we need some big tentpole movies we need some we need some big hits and this one seems like it'll be our first first start of the uh, season because fall guy is really oof, taking kind of a nosedive so um yeah, I, I don't think this this is a blockbuster like, yeah tentpole movie well, Fall guy to me seems like a that's like a fun niche comedy that you <laughs> Maybe will people see, maybe they won't. Like, right. I get that. But at the same time, like good, when movies are good and they start out at the box office and they're good and they get good word of mouth, they shouldn't, they should keep moving. And, you know mm. I mean? Like there's obviously they're going to dip, you know, you're not going to make that, but you know, like these 50% dips to the next weekend. That's the problem is it's not, yeah. people just aren't going, you know, cause fall guys, yeah. great reviews. Word of mouth has been, Really good cinema score, post audience scores, everything. But anyway, we talked about that last week too. But um, you know, just kind of thoughts on that. Um, initial thoughts on this, man. It is right in line with the other ones. Talk about just hitting dingers, dude. These Planet yes. of the Apes movies, like that. They original, are so that original, good. <laughs> that original series of Charlton Heston, like I'm sorry, it did not have the consistency this this series does. It's we've talked about how rare it is for for movies to make, you know, usually you can get one good one. The second one sometimes is better, but usually it's not. Mm -hmm. And then time, by the time you get to the third or fourth one, like this is dog shit. And yeah, this is one yeah, of those yeah. franchises that they're really doing a really good job of. 
they keep finding these actors that are just amazing in their roles. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, don't want to get into the spoilers, but like these people and all their motion capture work, it's so impressive. All the things that it's they do. It's crazy how good crazy. The, like CG mocap, like it looks real. Like it doesn't feel like you're watching mocap. feels like you're watching actual live talking apes. It, it um, does. hundred percent. So you mentioned the, just overall these movies, they are so good. Each movie could easily stand and very self-contained its mm -hmm. own movie. Like that together over the years, I think they've been, it's been 10 plus years since we've started this particular version of mm -hmm. the franchise, but like, it's so crazy how like long-term storytelling where like this franchise, I think does everything right that the current Marvel is doing wrong. We're like, we've talked about this, like every Marvel thing, like all these shows, they're just like, it's like they create something or a character because they want to set it up for this next thing for you to have to yep. go and watch the, these movies. They are setting up the next movie and the next thing in the timeline, but it doesn't feel like that's why it's in the movie. Like they just are self-contained stories. We've and talked about there. that lately too. You and I both mentioned that where there's been certain things we've watched that they're not, they enrich the movies that came before it or the sequel, right? Like they, yeah. they, they improve upon it. Like it's not, that they are a necessity to understand what's happening, but they like, you watch it and you're like, Oh, that makes the previous one so much better. Or yes. Yes. Or like we've, we've watched, like we've watched the lore grow. Like the yes. first movie is it, the first movie and this movie are like in different universes. Like first movie mm -hmm. you're in normal world. Humans are alive. Like, yep. The whole movie is like that and it's Caesar like breaking out and like little things like his, his window from the first movie, like it's what he draws in his cage at like the zoo or the, you know, the play, the, the habitat enclosure that he ends up at. He draws his fucking window on the wall and mm -hmm. then that slowly becomes like his symbol throughout the next movies where he is slowly rising to lead his people. And then this movie were two or 300 years in the future. Yeah. And all of that, that we got in those movies is now lore and legend. And in this movie, they do just a great job of like taking things that we know. Cause we've, we saw it, we witnessed it and seeing how some groups take the things and the teachings from this big epic mm -hmm. legendary figure. And, completely twist it for the wrong reasons yep and the and the other group that tries to follow his teachings based on how he actually was and i just thought mm -hmm. that's it was such a cool parallel to the real world and uh, it's it just, is oh so god i want to talk more in detail about that part so like uh, let's just get it out of the way yep, yep yes if you liked the original three planet of the apes movies this one it doesn't miss a beat go see it it's great Yes. If you've never seen any of those movies, go see this movie. It's great. You don't need to nope. see them. It's and it'll so make you good. want it'll make you want to go back and watch the others. Yes. It's yeah. it's a ton of fun. This movie I felt like gave way more nods to the original series and not like trying to stay not trying to really go in depth of like pointing out things from that original movie, but iconic classic moments or scenery from those originals we guessed yes. we we and you couldn't do that in the other movies because like we hadn't got to this point in the time of the world of after the apes have taken over so right. we're finally at the point where we can start seeing stuff from like the original movies i'm all about it go see it tell us about it howie give spoiler us the warning rundown. spoiler warning get up all right yeah. So the, yeah. what you were just talking about, like Caesar's like, he's almost Jesus. Yeah, for real. hundred percent. That's the way they treat it. And it's just like you said, just it's 
there's there's this group that's like this is the way caesar was he was you know he was calm he listened he was you know he tried to work things out then there's the other group that's like no caesar wants wanted us to do this and we live his way and yada 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 and violence and slaves and blah 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 yeah. boy if that isn't a parallel to uh yeah just like modern religion like caesar's this deity that that uh yeah. that lived in hundreds of years ago uh it's amazing though i the way that they did that and the way that they and these are it's apes and it's crazy because it doesn't matter <laughs> yeah. it doesn't matter that it's apes it, it it's yeah. it's not it's, can... it's so cool like it's one, great. The, one like every movie in this franchise has done a completely different setting mm -hmm. and like this one was cool because we got we're so far in the future that they're right next to kind of a downtown metropolis like skyscraper building area mm -hmm. so we see these massive skyscrapers that are overtaken by vines and trees and like and that's how they kicked the movie off is going through this like dystopian future which this director like I was watching some behind the scenes stuff. He's done a lot of like just maze runner future stuff, right? The whole maze. That's runners. like, yep. That's his thing. And so and he talks about like his favorite thing to do is like the romanticism of like new beginnings. And this movie is very much feels like that. Like we're getting new characters We're the other movies felt like the humans were on their last leg and they're yep. trying to survive. And this feels like we've now gotten to the point where the apes are now like, they are the superior race. The, the humans aren't even known by like a, most like this village and group of apes that we meet and we're a part of, they don't even know what a human is. They, they just know there's a creature that they call it an echo. They don't even know that that's a human. Um, so which I thought they never really talked about why they call them an echo. I just assumed like maybe they called them an echo because they're like an echo of what maybe an ape used to be or evolved from. I don't know. But um, I love the setting of it. Yes. We got freaking apes riding horses, which is straight out of the old movies. Like that was super cool. I mean, I think we, we had that in the last yeah, movie. But Caesar, this... Yeah, had a couple awesome scenes where he's like, old western kind of style right freaking horse yes. is badass but we got them with like their shock sticks which was from the original movie so like that was cool um proximus the mm -hmm. the bad guy proximus which is a, a greek word for like next in line or close to it's like the next caesar is essentially like proximus mm -hmm. caesar fucking cool i he his like mannerisms, how his delivery like just makes him such a cool, interesting character. Yeah, he's a he's an awesome villain. Fucking super badass villain. And the director talks about him like he's not a villain. He's like he's not a villain. He's a of course he's not. he 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 is he's all for apes like he uh -huh. wants to, he's like just for his people he wants to learn he wants tools like that's the whole plot right his yes, yep. his whole purpose well you know we'll get to that because he doesn't even show up till like the last 45 yeah, really, minutes of the really. movie yeah i was so impressed by the beginning like you start off you've got um noah and suna and anaya like this three group of friends and they're scaling these buildings getting in these these birds nests like eagles nests taking eggs and and you don't really know what it's for you're thinking like i'm thinking like oh they're scavenging right like they're bringing yeah, back food eat them. Yeah. yeah well their whole tribe like raises these birds they bond with you which is just like whoever like the writer like if josh friedman <laughs> yeah. thought of that like dude that's awesome that's that's an amazing idea it's super cool how they use these birds to like and they're like gathering fish and stuff. And it's like this, um, this like symbiotic relationship. They have. like, they, they're part of reminds me of Avatar. Like does, when they, yeah. they, they do the bond with their Egon or whatever the fuck the thing is. Yeah, the birds. Anyway, they're like, they, 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 they like are together. It's not like they're, their pets or they're, you know, like it, it's like they work to, it's crazy. And like, there's even this like, 
animosity between his father's bird. Did you just drop something? What was that uh, sound? It was it was my Magneto helmet. I actually bumped into it because I was really I thought like something fell. It was no. like rolling down. The it was Sorry. telling it was Continue. telling me to put it back. It was wants me to put it back on. Um <laughs> but it's it's like his father's bird, which is yeah. like they like he hates Noah and Noah doesn't like the bird because they like they're fighting for the affection of the father, which is just yeah. it's crazy. Uh the set the setting of just their village was cool. Like they're super they're cool. this they're this eagle tribe. They raise fucking eagles. The elder men, it, they basically have their, there's these two giant like electrical power towers that they have turned into like a makeshift, like scaffolding that just goes way up into the sky. Yep. And they've got these eagles like at the top where they train. And I thought like they, there's an, like a huge, battle scene early on there where basically the tribe gets destroyed and the dad gets killed but there's this cool fight at the top yeah. of these like freaking scaffolding electrical power village towers and like it just if it, it was it was cool i fucking love this movie i had so much fun watching yeah, it i can't it's even super like cool. fucking um basically like while they're getting these eggs um one of the echoes humans um mm. had like steals like noah's blanket so they track it down they find blood on it anyway they take the they take it back they tell the elders like there was an echo fyi just so you know um and then later that night um noah's like he's out fixing like one of the the fish hanging things like he goes out late at night to and he hears something so he goes and he investigates and it's the girl human um, she like spooks him and breaks his egg. And so, mm. and he has to have it at dawn. He has to have an egg. So he has to go back to the city to get another one. And it's, it's late now it's at night. And so one of the like, um, warriors of the tribe had gone to go find the echo right mm -hmm. earlier. So he goes into the city, he finds like these dead bodies and he finds the warrior guy from his camp. And that dude's like dying. And he's like, you know, you need to go. There's other apes here. Then here yeah. comes these, all these apes, right? And they find Noah's horse and the horse leads them back to the village. And that's what creates this giant battle, right? It's not yeah, Noah's yeah. fault, but it's Noah's horse that kind of leads it to there. It's, it's the Echo's fault. It's that yeah. damn dirty human. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the, his tribe is very much like, you could tell they're peaceful. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're not about like, battle and stuff right. like that and so you get a lot of that for the first like chunk of the movie and then all of a sudden yeah. when he runs into these like dead bodies of other apes and then these freaking other apes come riding in on horses with giant shock sticks and masks on and it just they like blitzkrieg him and then yeah. the, the village and it's like it's very like shocking and very jarring and, and there's then, like a general that's like a it's like a big gorilla, right? Yes, which he is. I thought was fucking it's cool. Psychopath, super badass. It's yeah, basically the leader of the henchmen or the these soldiers or whatever they are, led by this big giant fucking gorilla. Mm -hmm. And the gorilla is, ends up having this badass fight with um, with Noah's dad at the top of this tower with Noah as well. Yeah. Dad gets killed. Noah gets thrown off the tower. Everybody they thinks think Noah's dead. dead. Right. Yeah. They think he's dead. So they leave him there and they, he, they basically round up this group of this village and they take them wherever they are going. So the movie ends up being Noah. Like you could tell that early on, he is like, he's like a kid trying to become a man. This yep. Eagle egg ceremony is supposed to be like bonding. And then that's how you, and he's trying to find his father's you, affection. Yes, you very much get that he's he he wants his father's approval more than anything. Yes, but that they yeah. don't see him as he's like his own man kind of thing. Mm, right. And so this his his father has killed, and then it like sets him off on this like this mission to save his people. Yep, to become the leader that maybe he never thought he could be, and like mm -hmm. it's. It's if like did a great job of kicking the movie off and action packed the whole for sure. movie. Like it for doesn't sure. it doesn't stop. I mean, I, I it does stop, but I mean, but like then the, the parts that are in, that are in between are super important. 
Yeah. And then it just kicks right back off with something else that's just awesome. Yes. His freaking Peter Macon, which his ape name was what? Raka. Raka. Raka is a freaking like like I said, he stole the show. Like his He's super funny. He's the orangutan that Noah runs into, which in every Planet of the Apes movie, there's always like an orangutan who's like the super smart one. And yep. um, he was kind of like the advisor of Caesar in the first couple of movies. And Raka is basically like an advisor to Noah. Like his te- Noah doesn't know anything about Caesar or the ways of Caesar. He doesn't know mm. anything about humans. He just knows his own village and how he's grown up as an ape. And so when he reached Raka, Raka, like basically he's in a similar situation of Noah. All of his people have been taken out by this mm-hmm. group. And Raka is like this old wise kind of gives me a Rafiki vibe. Um, but he like helps Noah teaches Noah about like what humans are and how the humans are like have symbols that like have, are actually mean things. Yes, he's yeah. rocking a necklace with like the window, like Caesar's window symbols, yep. so kind of like a cross almost. Yeah, you think, yeah. Like in parallels. Because, um, and they talk about Caesar as like this like deity who was mm-hmm. compassionate and didn't kill and like wanted to make peace with humans and, and, and they're stronger together. And so, mm-hmm. um, Raka was just a ton of fun. I freaking loved him. I love that we got. Uh, there was like a post credit. It wasn't a scene, but you just got like a laugh or a growl kind of thing. That was Raka from what I found out online. So he potentially actually made it because um, there's a scene where he gets taken off into this crazy river. Uh, but anyways, Raka was super freaking great. I loved like when the female, the human character who is basically following Noah Mm -hmm. it was it it was so just like roles were reversed from what you would typically see where like the human was very much like the animal like she doesn't speak she acts like an animal they are like sitting by a campfire and like they're like oh it's hungry and they like throw food to try to like lure her closer just like a like yeah like we would with an animal we're trying to get close to us and yeah i I kept thinking i'm like it's like it's two cowboys in the desert And there's like mm-hmm. a like a wolf or something, right? That's what it, that's what it yeah. felt like, you know, like uh, you'd yeah. see in an old western. Yeah, uh, and, it's great. You're right. And he basically gives her like his mom's sweater to keep warm. They kind of start bonding as they're on this journey to go find the rest of his village people. Not the village people, but people of his village. <laughs> Young great. men. No. Anyway. Um, but yeah, they they bond. Um, and then they come to a point where they find more humans, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? And so there's, here's all these humans. They seem very, you know, little advanced. They don't, they look like Neanderthals almost the way they're, yeah. they're foraging and whatnot. They come across, there are all these zebras too. And they're all like, what the heck are these striped horses? It's, yeah, yeah. it's pretty entertaining. And you think about it, like if there was like a herd of zebras that got out of a zoo, Right. If there was like an apocalypse, yes, they would obviously create a herd and there'd be more of them and they would. Yeah, it's it's yeah. wild. You'd see them in the wild, like in California, um, which is where I felt like this movie was based on. It's obviously along a coast. Yeah. Lots of woods. There's some mountainous areas. So I was thinking in my head and that's isn't that where the original ones are, too. It's yeah, in, like San Francisco. Yeah, the other movies. In the San Francisco. So I, I felt like that. But um but she doesn't want to be with the humans. She wants to stay with Noah and Raka. And yeah. then the bad guys show up, right? And yeah. so then they kind of, there's a big chase scene. Noah saves May, the human, right? Like from, from them. And she cries out Noah because they're in this tall grass, right? Mm-hmm. And then you realize, oh, she can talk. Yeah. yeah. She, and which like. It like blows Noah's mind. It's like, there's no way this thing can talk. Like mm-hmm. that's crazy. Basically anything Raka tells Noah about humans that they can do or that they can speak, that they're intelligent. He's like, you're fucking crazy. Like that's a dog. Dogs can't talk. Right. Dogs can't fucking walk. Like, so I, they just, they did a good job of that. Of 
um, like creating that feeling. And then when she does talk, even like you as the audience, you're like, like oh shit, like there's more oh, to her. Snap. Like, there's more to her. So uh, they end up, they're trying to find the basically where these evil apes are from because that's where their village is. They end up at this fucking super cool setting where it's basically like a raging river and like a a bridge that's built across this river that clearly was built by whatever this evil ape group is. But it's like, it's, a, it, I thought it was super like an interesting setting for a movie, like this fucking t- t- like scary yeah. raging river, this, on bridge this rickety it, fucking yeah. bridge. Like it, like it feels like you're walking into like the city of a, of like the villains very much. And so they get freaking ambushed on the, on the bridge. They yeah, these captured. apes are crawling underneath it, and it's like, yes. oh shit! Mm. Yeah, they get captured. Raka gets swept away. We don't see him again in the rest of the movie. But yeah. like you said, there it might be a tease that he comes back. Um, but yeah, they end up. They find the. They end up getting taken in. They get captured. They get. They go to where Proximus is, which is it's a cool setting too. He lives in like an yeah. old tanker ship right like a it's like, like beached a, it's, it's a like big cargo beach. ship yeah and there's there's all these like ape camps up on the shoreline and it's like villages he'd captured right like he's trying to make yeah. them all together he's building his kingdom and there's a giant vault and they have this big scene where they have like these horses and these giant apes are pulling on it they're trying to, they even use like gunpowder to like ignite and try to get into this vault and they try to open it and he wants whatever's inside and yeah, that's why he wants human vault it's yes he human wants the human the that's why he wants the human girl because mm-hmm. he knows she knows something about them but noah finds his family finds his mom he finds his friends he finds his village and they don't really mess around like it's like that first night there they're like nah fuck this we're gonna we're <laughs> yeah gonna like fuck we're gonna some, fuck, fuck it. we're busting out of here yeah so I, I, it was, it was, it's timing is great because we've been watching Fallout. Um, mm, yeah. Like, or at least we've been talking about Fallout. Yeah. And this vault is very much something from Fallout, except on like a massive scale. It's like right. this giant human vault built into a mountain. And I'm watching it and I'm thinking, like, I just watched Terminator 3 and I'm thinking, like, oh, that's where John Connor's at. He's in that vault. Dude, yes. Which, so you end up finding out from her that because she knows more than you realize. And there's another that, human that he's like being employed basically by Proximus to yes. teach him, like, to read books and teach him about everything. Like that's dude, which Proximus is fucking he's badass. The director talked about him as like, yes, he's an ape who knows more about humans than any other ape ever. And essentially from what you just said, like he takes he captures a very intelligent human and then uses that as like his advisor to learn like nightly has dinner and learns about like Greek and roman history and just like wants to know more and more about humans because he is like we're the superior race we need this knowledge so that we can because humans used to fly and they used to do like these crazy things that we should be able to do and in that vault has the stuff that i need to be able to do that so we're gonna fucking every single day these thousands of apes that i have captured or taken over that i am now their king they're going to try to break into this fucking door and every day we're going to try it. And until we break in, that's what we're going to do. It's like essentially how his little village and kingdom works. And like what you were saying is like the director doesn't see Proximus as a villain. No, he just sees someone that has a thirst for knowledge, wants to keep the apes together to build this kingdom. Cause we're the superior race. He doesn't give a shit. If you want to have your own village, we're all going to be in this together. Apes stick together. Apes are going to get all the tools and all the stuff. And we're yep. going to conquer the what's left of the humans because we're the superior race. Yep. Yes. His motivation makes sense. It's his, his execution's a little to be desired. His He's, delivery is a little <laughs> insane. He's a little nuts. Like, like power, mad, crazy. He sees himself essentially as a god. You can very much tell. Like, he's, a, he's the mad king, essentially. Yes. Yes. That, like, the first time you meet him, 
like all of these apes are out working like as if it's like a mine like they're all working doing yes. the different things to try to work on opening this giant vault door and then like like the time comes where it's like oh it's time for it's that time of day where the king is going to come address us and so they all like start beating drums and start chanting mm -hmm. and then he walks in as like this epic freaking conquering king and he's just super charismatic the yes. actor that played him was Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant, which you have, if you, for me, like, I don't know him by name, but I know his face and that, that yep. I've seen him in a million movies. Yeah. He's um, in a ton of stuff. He was the blob in X-Men Origins Wolverine. He was the, like the hen lead henchman in the rock walking tall movie. Uh, yeah. He was, uh, I'm trying to think what else he was. Oh, we talked about he's little John in the 2010 Robin Hood with, with uh, Russell Crowe, like, yeah, he, you'll, he's one of those guys, if you saw him, you're like, you like oh, instantly recognize him. I know that guy. Yeah. So I thought it was great for him to get his, like, shine in the sun. Um, we, we didn't really talk about it. This movie is, is all mocap. Like, these are, all of these apes are actual mm -hmm. actors. Right. And just like the old one, just like the other ones were. Yeah, very much. Yep. So. Yep, real actors and, in dots and gray suit with headgear. Yes, with with like extended metal arm crutches, yes. so they could do uh, they could do like the ape walking. Uh, I he there was a behind the scenes clip of him like in an interview, and in mid interview he like clicks into because they're talking about like how do you get into like being an ape and acting, and he clicks into like being his character, and it's what they call aping which apparently they had to do a lot of like workshops and stuff where mm -hmm. they basically are just acting like an ape to each other and it was like the coolest like it was very uncomfortable you could tell for the the interviewer as yeah. he was like acting like was that the, like, good morning america one where it was like michael yeah. strahan yeah that was yeah funny. yeah it was it was michael strahan, strahan. Yeah, i was like was, what the shit it's like what the fuck is going on like you're terrifying so um and he's a fucking big dude. Like Kevin Durant's uh, a big dude. Kevin Durant's fucking huge. And he mm -hmm. he looked like he punked Michael Strahan. Michael Strahan's mm -hmm. a big fucking dude. Yes, he is. So anyways, I so like I saw that clip before I saw the movie, and so it got me really excited to see him as a villain, and he knocked it out of the park. He was fucking yeah. awesome. He's amazing. Um the, the whole the whole the whole movie is amazing. All the actors are phenomenal. William H. Macy, even as this like Trevathan, this like human that's oh, a yeah. proximus. He's Basically, he's like, just do what you're told, you know, like, and we'll be taken care of. Like, we, look, yeah, look dude, at what I got it good. Yeah. Like, I'm living in this ship. They're bringing I'm getting fed. Like, they, I have all these books like can't beat it, you know, and, and, and it's another one of those things where it's like you get everyone's motivation. The yes. only person whose motivation you don't know is you don't know why May is there. Yeah. And then yeah, that's where her story comes out. Basically, they're going to blow up. The, 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 like, what is it? The blockade that keeps the seawall out, like the seawall yeah, that, that keeps the water out. Right. And they're going to flood the vault because she knows how to get in. And because she doesn't want Proximus to have anything that's inside, she's, they're going to flood it, but she's got to get something out of it first. Then you don't know what. So they break yeah. in. It's, it's, it's Noah, uh, Suna and Anaya, mm -hmm. and then May. They have to climb up this wall. Uh, along the the ocean and then they find a vent and they go inside and it is it's like a bunker but it's full of all sorts of military stuff there's weapons there's classrooms um all this different stuff and we kind of skipped over the scene but like there's a scene on the journey where noah finds this like giant telescope like an observatory yeah. Yeah, and you don't point. see what he sees but like he's blown away by what he sees through the telescope and realizing it's in the sky and there's this cool scene where they're in the vault and he's in this classroom and he sees the planets. And it's almost like the director leaves it very ambiguous about what's on the other side of the telescope. But mm -hmm. like when he sees like Saturn, he almost is like he like pokes it like maybe that like is that what I saw through the telescope, yeah. which super cool. But uh, anyway, they they're in the vault, they go to open the vault, they're getting ready to blow this thing and the vault opens and Proximus is waiting like he knows yeah. they're in there. Right. Because it is daylight now. And he's like, well, what did you bring me? You are a very clever ape, that kind of thing. You know, he's like, yeah. but he brings the entire village with him because he knows if they're going to do something, they're all going to get it.
Yeah. yeah. And this is when you realize May had taken like a, a satcom link. Like it's like a, a to, to you. I wasn't sure what it was at first. I was like, is this like for weapon, like nuclear weapons? Is this yeah, for communications? I didn't know what it was for. Uh, but she steals it. And then she's like the, the, the bad apes are there. The village is now in the vault. And they're going to kill Noah's mother if he doesn't like give up May. And May pulls out a gun and smokes this ape. That's yeah. like, okay. and that's when they, <laughs> and that's when Proximus is like, oh, there's some good shit in this vault. I knew I was yeah. right. And yep. she ends up blowing the seawall, like the dam with the village inside. And of course now Noah's pissed because you're going to kill all my people. And yeah, that you, seems it, and this this moment you start you really see where you you learn you don't necessarily learn her exact motivation, but you learn that she doesn't give a fuck about anybody, including no. Noah, who she's just spent so much time mm-hmm. getting to know and bonding with that she's right. like, I've got what I fucking came for, yeah. and I used all of you to get it. Now and she killed Trace. Like yeah, she, she, she put him in the rear quick. naked choke and choked him to death and then threw him in the water. Like, yeah. cause she, he was going to tell Proximus that they were up to no good. She wasn't yeah. standing for that whole thing floods, which is an awesome scene, right? Basically he's like, he, he was just in the vault. So Noah's like, climb, climb, climb. Yeah. So they all climb out freaking badass gorillas chasing him. And he like starts diving through these pipes, getting the gorilla to follow him. And he sneaks out through this, like tiny little gap that he knows the gorilla can't get through. And he like slowly watches the gorilla drown. And it's fucking like drown as the water. Damn. Yeah. That he's like, fucking hardcore. Yeah, that is like, hardcore. Oh, like he's okay, just, and he's no. just standing there staring at him too. He's like, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> like that's, and that's the fucking ape that killed his dad. So he was like yeah. fucking soaking that in eyeballing yep. him was like yep you're about to die as his and hand I just tricked you into uh, it yeah, yeah it's it awesome um, gets, and yeah gets, that scene was uh, the vault that's just flooding and rising and they're fucking trying to race through to get out before yeah. they get stuck was cool it's super cool super cool, <laughs> super cool. No, uh, noah gets out there's the whole village waiting for him outside the vent and here comes proximus attacks him and just beats the piss out of him right yeah. One of the things we didn't mention is the entire time he's been on this journey, basically like the, the sun eagle has been like leading him, like his brother eagle, his dad's eagle, has been leading him on this path. And he's ran into him a couple of times and he scratches his arm because he's a dick, right? Yeah, the 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 eagle has like nipped at Noah yes. in the very first scene when he's by his dad of like, yeah. you could tell the eagle doesn't like him. And like right. they are not cool. It's 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 mutual there too. Yeah. They they don't like each other. They get yeah. up, Proximus and there's a scene with Raka where he had explained to Raka about the Eagles and how there's a like the 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 village elder like sings a song, right, to the Eagles. Yeah. And and I and, and I when I when I heard him and he and he said I'd really like to hear it and I was like, No, that's not for me. It's not my place to sing that song. So Noah's like just beat to this beat to crap. The Proximus yep. is ready to launch him off the side of the the, the wall the into the giant ocean. Giant cliff. Yeah. Yeah. And Noah starts singing the song. Right? And then all of the villagers start singing the song. And then all of these eagles just start shredding Proximus. Yeah, fucking like, him up. Yeah, clawing at him, fucking him up. Basically, he gets launched off the cliff instead, and then here comes Sun Eagle landing on Noah's arm, and his mom yeah. is like, "Noah's the Noah's the like, boss now. He's he's the dude. Yeah, he is the fucking man. It, this, um, every scene in this movie is just powerful, action packed, awesome. The way it plays out, I loved it. All characters that were in none of the other movies. So like, yes, these are all new people and like Uh the character development, like getting you acclimated to Noah and then getting behind him. And then like when he gets to the point where he takes his rightful place as king, at least of his own village, Uh it's just, it's a, it's a fucking cool ass movie. It is. Um, There's a, there's, like I said earlier, there's a, t- and you did it. I'm glad you brought up the telescope. There's a ton of little nods. There's 
this is the first movie where they really leaned into some of those things from the original movies, but also like the very first movie did a great job of like, if you haven't seen the movie in a long time, you might not remember, but in, in the original movie with um, fucking Spider-Man guy, why can't I think of his oh, name? James Franco. James Franco and rise. There, Planet of the Apes. Yes. And rise. There are, there are like, there's TV news scenes and like newspapers of talking about a space, um, spaceship or a rocket that was going to Mars with a group of, of astronauts and that they were lost in space. Like that's, you see that throughout a couple of times throughout the movie. Um, and they don't really ever talk about it. And you, if you've seen the original movies, you could tell like maybe that's what they were hinting at. But in this movie, there's a ton of nods to like the original like first couple of movies in yeah. the vault. They find a little, uh, they find like a baby doll that when like mm -hmm. you pick the doll up, the eyes open and it makes a little cry sound. Mm -hmm. The apes do, and all the apes that the three friends as they're in the vault, they they like we said they don't know what humans are they never knew about them growing up they definitely wouldn't think that they'd be intelligent or could build things right so but they find this uh this baby doll and the baby doll the, i believe it's the second original planet of the apes there's like an underground group of like of people um or underground group of apes i can't remember which group but ba th that baby doll is the exact same doll mm. that was from that movie and that doll was what like that was like the turning point in the movie of basically proving to apes that humans were intelligent at one point because they had this stuff so right anyway so i thought that was cool they used like the exact same tons baby of callbacks doll, the exact right. same cry um but the cool, so the very end, they, like, they, that telescope scene was like, there was something there. Like, yeah. you could tell he saw something that was major, like, profound impact. And then they go, they, the last scene, they go back. And as they're going to the telescope, they, like, click, they, they pan over and on the wall is this giant, like, picture, or, like, carving of an astronaut as right. they go into the the telescope yeah because and... he he takes like his friend suna there to show mm -hmm. her like look you got to see this this is amazing yeah so they go back to this telescope and they look up while also at the same time it's like clipping back and forth to may as she's returning to where she comes from and she finds she basically walks up to what looks like an abandoned random door out in the middle of nowhere as she's just on this montage journey mm. and a person opens the vault up a human in like a fucking hazmat suit so then you're yep. like oh my god there's actually a group of humans that are alive they're living underground and then it you show she hands over this key and then that person with the hazmat suit goes back into this giant underground vault and then you see there's basically like what feels like NASA or like mm -hmm. like you said, kind of like Terminator. Felt like the rise of the resistance, like yeah. all these people computer boards and they're switching things on electronically and they put the key in that she got and they are communicating essentially with other humans across the world right. to what feels like to kick, like spark the, the comeback of humans and right. or potentially talk to people in space. So like the real callback was the James Franco movie where they talked about the missing astronauts that went to Mars that disappeared. Mm -hmm. They're looking in this telescope out into space. The where the beach was and where the like the the kingdom was where proximus's place was was very almost shot for shot similar to the exact location of where they found the vault in number two um but basically from what they were saying with kind of the space nods because planet of the apes has a lot of space stuff mm -hmm. time travel essentially they're saying now we've set up for them to potentially like do what the 
original movie original, was. Right. Where maybe this group of astronauts that got lost in space, they got maybe lost in like a wormhole or something. Yep. And are going to return to Earth and it's going to be ran by apes. So I thought that was fucking cool. Like that, I, I love that. So, yes. Listen. The movie was fantastic. It's right in line with the other Planet of the Ape reboot movies. This is a reboot of reboot, which is pretty interesting, and it's, the quality's still there. I yep. had I had a great time. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It did not feel like a very long movie, but it was um, action packed. I'm gonna go eight and a half. I really oh, yeah. liked it. I really liked. It. I'll give it a nine. This is a nice. nine movie for me. It's right up in what I like in movies. So yeah, I agree. Anyway, that's our review of the 2024 American science fiction, dystopian action adventure film. Kingdom of the planet of the apes. Love Boy, it. This is a long episode. That's got to we got to get rolling time for my favorite segment. There can be only five. Only five. So I went this week off of, what you had last week where you had like the top running scenes. So I was like, this really kind of got sparked when you were talking about Rocky, right? And mm -hmm. Rocky running to, and I was like, man, you know what I love? I love a good montage, like a good and like training montage is what I'm thinking, right? Like you gotta, you gotta have a good training montage where somebody's learning the skills of the trade, right? And you got to show how they get good in a quick, a quick scene. And there's usually some really just dynamite music. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, so that was what I went with um, this week. So top five montages. Um, and I went straight five. I did not have an honorable mention on this one. So I just went straight five. So at number five, I had Footloose. Um, I had the scene where Kevin Bacon's teaching his uh, his buddy there in the school to dance. And I think it's, what's the song? Let's hear it for the boy. Like, and they're dancing in the freaking fields and stuff. And they keep cutting back in scenes. And uh, listen, I, I think that's a pretty damn good, uh, pretty damn it's good. Very movie. memorable movie scene. Yeah, it is. It is. So that's what I had at number five. And yeah. number four, I had the League of Shadows training scene for Batman Begins. Oh, yeah. Nice. Number four. Uh, awesome scene with Christian Bale. Uh, League of Shadows learning from Ducard. Which we, oh, yeah. You know, come to find out his old... Uh, Stand on top of the poles yeah. fighting. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, it. you know, Bruce Bruce Wayne's out there just jacked learning how to uh, become an yeah, assassin. Yes. Christian Bale. Yep. Yeah. Love it. Um, had that number four. Number three, I had the Karate Kid. Ooh, old, Dan nice. old Daniel Sons training on... Wax on. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking more like when they do the where he's like he's on the beach and he's learning how to do the crane kick and he's in the boat. And Miyagi's like rowing the boat, try, teaching him balance. And oh, Daniel, son, you all wet? Yeah. And, all, and he's <laughs> anyway. So that's I had Karate Kid at uh, number three. Um, all right. So number two, little off, little off wall here. Uh, number two, I had Mulan. Will make a man out of you at number Fuck two. It. Great. <laughs> Outstanding. It's an amazing scene. It's Mulan and all her buddies learning how to become just freaking trained. Freaking. Oh, yeah, man. God, it just fucking. Old Donny Osmond just building out. I'll make a man out of you. Just um, fucking great. And then number one. Swift is a coursing river. You, you could do. This entire list could be Rocky movies. 100%. 100%. 100%. Rocky, like, perfected the movie montage. Like, Rocky 1, Rocky 2, Rocky 3, but the best one of all is fucking Rocky 4. Rocky 4. <laughs> God. In Russia, sly with the beard, slifting the logs up, like, in the snow, just pulling Dude. shit. Fucking the fucking Russian in their old ass Mercedes are chasing him and he fucking runs to the top of the mountain. Right. And, and meanwhile, while he's training out in the wilderness, Ivan Drago's in the like sport lab, punching machines and doing all that stuff. Anyway, 
best training Dude. montage ever in a movie, Rocky IV. And the music was so fucking good. Okay. Yeah. This is this is going to be great. I love this. This it's is why we do these lists. Similar. Top five training montages for me. I did have one honorable mention, Beer Fest. Oh, nice. Random, but I great. fucking love that movie. So I'm Hell like, yeah. I'm going to give that a shout out. Uh, number five. Cool I, I, yeah, oh my God. Fucking great. What a great movie. I haven't seen mm-hmm. it in a long time. Uh, number five, like you said, I was going to do all in one, but I felt like there are two that I really like. Rocky three, I had to put on this list. Mm-hmm. This is the training montage when him and Apollo on the beach. Now, yeah. Yes. They they run on the beach. Fucking Apollo gives this. There's, there is no tomorrow. Like when Rocky gives him like, I'll do it. Like, well, I'll get it tomorrow. He's like, there is no tomorrow. And then they fucking have this epic slow-mo beach hugging sprinting scene anyways rocky three one of the best training montages ever my number four batman begins where christian bale bruce wayne is learning from the league of shadows uh for all the reasons you said that's my number four too so we both had that number four uh number three way different than most people would think of when they think of training montages but the Incredibles has oh. one of the coolest training montages. Amazing. When Mr. Mr. Incredibles, Incredibles getting buff. Yeah, he's Hell fucking yeah. doing like push-ups of the of the train, train cars. And, or, yes. and, like, or maybe he was like had it with his legs and he flips it up to back to being normal as the train goes by and waves to him. He goes mm-hmm. from being this like fat out of shape over the hill old new superhero back to old freaking pants can fit more. So Great training montage. It's animated, but mm. I fucking love that. Uh, number two, one of the best training montages of all time, Mulan. Fuck yeah, let's go. Fucking what a badass training montage this fucking movie is. Um, we'll make a man out of you. It's just, it's a, it's, it's, it's a classic. It's a seminal. You ever watch that movie and then like that scene gets over and you watch it again? Probably every time. Every time. Every time. It's a fucking great movie. Mulan Mm -hmm. slept on. That movie fucking rocks. And that song slaps. (laughs) Dude, the (laughs) amount of like, uh, like, what's it like guy girl dances that Mm -hmm. I can think of that like Steph has made me participate in, like where the football players have to come and dance with the dance team. That is the song that is always in it. So nice. Um, fucking great. Mulan as my number two. Number one, the greatest fucking training montage in any movie ever, Rocky Four. This is the training montage. Mm-hmm. Rocky One set the tone, got a, it taught us about these things. It's like, okay, mm-hmm. cool. Like, let's see him go from nothing to something. But Rocky IV, the stakes are high. The music is incredible. Every yes. freaking song in this movie is killer. I actually want to give a shout out. There's a montage earlier in the movie. It's not a training montage, but yep. um, it's right after Apollo dies. And Rocky has to think about his life and where he's at. And he fucking gets in his Lamborghini and just fucking takes off and has one of the coolest montages ever. So Rocky IV actually has two of the most best famous montages ever in a movie rocky four number one greatest training montage ever shocked that you and i had so many similar yeah there's a, people when you hear this list you might think oh well yeah there's not that many that's bullshit there's a lot there's a lot out there so i like that we're pretty much on the same page for almost like, all of them so like Okay, so like every boxing movie ever probably has it. There's a bunch of baseball <laughs> yeah. movies that have training montages. Yes. I, like I think every Jean Claude every Van fighting Van movie. movie. Yeah, yes. exactly. Every fighting <laughs> movie has a training montage. How many different like sports movies do? Um, when I was looking at lists, I saw like Armageddon on there, and the only reason I, I saw did, that too, I almost put Armageddon I, on my list. The only reason I didn't is because they're training these fucking oil drillers to be astronauts, and it's. I, the, asinine thing in the world 
Anyway. I was going to have Armageddon on here instead of Rocky three. And I was just going to have Rockies like as my number one. Yeah. But I was like, I want to talk about Rocky four. Yeah. Love that. hundred percent. Love that. Let's jump over to mine for mm-hmm. uh, time constraints here. I mean, we, we, um, we can do what we want, but yes, we, you know, I, you know, me, I usually try to go with an on brand or at least we try to have something on brand. So I thought, okay, we just watched fucking one of the most amazing mocap mm-hmm. movies ever, which is shocking that none of these Planet of the Apes movies, at least the last three, shocking that they haven't won an Oscar, shocking even more so, Andy Serkis has never won an Oscar he, or he's- nominated. He's going to get one someday for his mocap work, even if it's like one of those like special like awards, outstanding like, achievements or something. Yes. Like, Hey, we fucked like you over for so long. Here's your award. Like, cause he deserves yeah, it. Like there, there is no award every year for the motion capture guy, but mm-hmm. you are the Michael Jordan of all motion capture yes, movies. hundred percent. So, um, so I did, I said, let's do top five mocap movies. Mm-hmm. Or performances. Yes. Um, and I, I, did, and, I uh, did performances. I went all performances. Yeah, so same, same. Look at that. So instead of, because I was thinking like movies like, oh, like the Ninja Turtles could maybe be on there, but like, and then I was like, I'm just going to do individual performances. So yes. we're on the same page. So this is top five mocap individual movie performances. Um, one, uh, one honorable mention. District Nine, Jason Cope. Mm-hmm. Fucking love that guy. You guys know I love that movie, and you know I love Jason Cope. Uh, number five, which was shocking, you texted about this because I had already written this down way earlier. I'm Alan Tudyk from iRobot. iRobot is a very slept on Will Smith movie. Yes. That there's a lot of things in that movie that current world today would be interesting looking back and saying, wow, they had a little bit, they had right of where, where the world's going. So uh, it feels like the world of Terminator, if the fucking Skynet didn't blow everybody up, but they started slowly working their way with uh, Terminators in the world. Anyways, I robot Alan Tudyk. He's fucking amazing as uh, the robot in that. And then also special shout out. He was in, he was K2SO in, um, oh, in uh, Rogue One, yeah, so he that's was right. The robot, so here's the droid in that. So, um, and then number four, one of the I felt like this movie I was gonna put this just the movie itself, but two actors specifically crushed it and made this. But Avatar with Zoe Saldana and then the guy from Terminator slash Sam Clash Worthington, Titans, Sam Worthington, just. When this movie came out, I was like blown away of like, is this CG? Is this real? Like, what am I watching? They just crushed it. I fucking love the av- the original Avatar movie. Um, and the mocap work in that is like it's like genre changing, I would sure. say. Yeah. So um, and then what they did with the second one with all the water was fucking wild too. So mm. uh and then I had number three. Davy Jones from the Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, Bill Nye. Um, Bill Nye. His not Davy the Jones, guy. not the science guy. Mm-hmm. He, which I, I had my list done and then like randomly saw his name and was like, yeah. oh shit. He was so, his character as a villain in mocap with dots all over his face and mm-hmm. like this stupid mocap suit to be able to to put through the performance that he did, it was fucking epic, awesome, right. and extreme. Made that movie what it was because he was such a cool, interesting villain that you kind of rooted for. So um, he's my number three uh, top mocap work, and then my number two, which is shocking for me to put the MCU and anything on a list of mine, but I had freaking Josh Brolin as Thanos in Infinity yeah. War. His Thanos was was epic. Like, he was so good as the villain and the mocap work felt 
I didn't feel like I was watching CG. I felt Not like fucking Thanos was a real person. <laughs> like, yes. A and giant the, purple ball chip. Yeah, like a giant monster. purple, terrifying, like wordsmith savant who I secretly was hoping would win the whole time because Josh Brolin was so fucking good at playing. Then he did. And, and we didn't get him in anything. So it was like so many movies to build up to this. And it was better than what you had expected and that's because josh brolin was fucking awesome so number two josh brolin thanos infinity war best mocap of all time and then number one this dude deserves the top spot so i'm giving him multiple movies basically all of his movies but are my number one but andy circus is the michael jordan of mocap he is the guy him as originally kicked it off as Smeagol or one Gollum from Lord mm-hmm. of the Rings. Best fucking mocap work ever. His acting was insane. That was probably the first movie where like an actor was recognized as just the fucking incredible as a mocap person. It, it was like shocking that wait, the guy who's doing the mocap is also the guy who's doing the sound and the voice and the talking crazy was amazing him as king kong in the king kong movie he was a fucking rock star that movie is amazing we've talked about that a lot um about that that movie doesn't get the love that it deserves it's fucking amazing and it's because of his king kong and then obviously him as caesar and all of the planet of the apes movies i thought it was kind of weird that we weren't getting any andy circus in this most recent movie but that's okay he was his on car- set as an advisor, he taught people. He helped teach them. How and to be. we did get, uh, we did get like a quick scene of his funeral and mm. death. So, like, I don't know if they actually had him lay there That's for that point. part, but uh, he was in the movie for a brief moment <laughs> for his Darth Vader burning scene. Yes. Um, but his Caesar in in the last two three movies leading up to this, like. Yep. It's 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 mind blowing how great of an actor he is from his facial like acting like not just the things he says but the that way he emotes emotion it's fucking crazy Andy Serkis the greatest mocap actor of our time and as we talk about that I totally forgot to do our fun fact of the day for the mm. movie that we just did. Um, speaking of mocap, fun fact or something you might not know about the movie is they brought in basically, I talked about how they're doing aping and stuff to like learn how to be apes. Mm-hmm. But they actually brought in like the head, like movement coach or body coach or whatever they have it from Circus Olay. So like mm. the Circus Olay guy came in, the dude who does like Ka and freaking all those other Circus LA shows basically to teach them how to be one with their bodies and move like apes, walk like them. So I thought that was really cool. Random fact. Anyways, that's my top five mocap list. Give me what you've got. All right. Show this, me this what will go fa- This will go is. fast. This will go fast. Pretty similar. Okay. Uh, honorable mention, I had Alan Tudyk in iRobot which I oh. didn't realize. I was like, who is an iRobot? And I'm pulling it up and I'm like, holy shit, Kyle. I didn't realize that was Alan Tudyk. <laughs> Alan Tudyk. Anyway, so honorable mention, shout out to Alan Tudyk, who is extremely, extremely underrated. At number five, I had Zoe Saldana from Avatar. Um, oh, I had, I had just her, because I feel like she's definitely the better performer out of the, the group it's there. It's because she screams in the movie. Like yeah, she's, she's a lot of she's very emotional. She cries her, a lot. Her kids die and stuff. It's sad. You know. It's a good point. It's I good had point. her at. Um, I had her at number five. At number four, I actually had Benedict Cumberbatch as Smog. Smog. In nice. The Hobbit. If you have you ever seen the behind the scenes of him doing a, the mocap work? I've seen He's like little. down on the ground, like slithering oh, around. I like seen that. oh, it's amazing. Watching him That's do awesome. that mocap work as Smaug, worth a watch because Dude. it's insane how he how much he gets into that role. Crazy. I I think 
I don't think Benedict, I mean, I think a lot of people knew about him, but I don't think he had like exploded as like the mega star just yet as that, or like basically the same time as that movie was coming out. So to me, it wasn't like I didn't, Benedict Cumberbatch being smog like wasn't something that I was like, oh, this is, oh, this super is cool. going to be amazing. Right Now looking back, I'm like, holy shit, freaking Sherlock. Doctor Strange is fucking smog, and he right. was fucking awesome. It's great, but Absolutely. continue. So Love I had him that. at number four, and number three, I had Toby Kebbell from Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, who played Koba, oh, the bad guy. Love that he you gave him a single a shout out. Freaking amazing! He was nasty, as good as like Kevin Durand is as Proximus. Like Koba was just a He's a villain. Like, yeah, he was yep. straight up a uh, villain. And Toby Kebbell's actually a pretty good actor, too. Unfortunately, he's probably best known for being Dr. Doom in the shitty, shitty Fantastic Four movie. Oh, shit. That's Toby <laughs> really? Kebbell. That's, that's who that is? Oh, mm-hmm. my God. I never even picked up on that. Yeah. So I had that. He was at number three. And then uh, the last two will be really easy. At number two, I had Josh Brolin as Thanos um, from... Obviously, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, most specifically. Infinity both of our number Marvel. twos have been the same today. Well, both our number ones are the same as well. And at number one, I had the king, Andy Serkis, and I did exactly <laughs> what you did. I listed yes. all three movies at number one because I couldn't put one above the other. Yes. I was gonna. I was thinking. I'm like, oh, I could put like King Kong, maybe one behind, but I couldn't put Caesar or Gollum. Yeah, they like they had to both be number one. So I was like, I'll just put King Kong with them. No big deal. All three. Exactly what you did for all the reasons you said. Mocap is a thing because Andy Serkis made it a thing. Like, I know he didn't create the technology, but his ability to perform motion capture with the facial expressions and the uh, the ability to act through freaking CGI. The guy created it made it his own and everybody looks to him as the pioneer of the format. Yes. So, and Circus is the Love mocap king. Look at these lists. You think Very we similar. talked before this episode about what we were doing? Never do. We didn't. Love it. Look at that. It's fantastic. I like that. Good lists, obviously, because we had such similarities. So very, yeah, very good was, stuff. That was a fun one. Yeah. Um, but that takes us to the end of episode 48, Kingdom of the planet of the apes. If you're watching us on YouTube, click the like and subscribe, click the bell, leave us a comment. Make sure you know when new episodes come out, which is at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time on Wednesday mornings. If you're not watching us on YouTube, you can find us on many podcast networks such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, and several others. You can also see some of our short clips and videos on social media at Movie Dads Pod, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Kyle, we're back next week, episode 49. You need to see this movie. We talked about it not that long ago. The Arnold Schwarzenegger sci-fi action classic. Classic. The Running Man. Next the week. The Running Man. The, oh. the most underrated, never talked about Arnold movie that Probably. deserves love. The Running Man. We're going to talk all about it. Episode 49 next week. I'm going to have a lot of fun. We're going to have a lot of fun watching that one too because it's been a, it's yeah. been a hot minute since I've seen it. So For sure. Same. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching everybody and we'll see you next time. Bye.